Welcome back to Crypto's Juiciest News, friends. Everybody is bleeding out of the behind. It's a family-friendly show, so we're going to need some Pikachu Thunderbolt action to date. Firstly, enjoy this Peppy taking a little bath with a little Peppy duck. How cute is that? Of course, we're watching Bitcoin, friends. It's at 65,000. I've woken up. Everyone says, yeah, what? It is over. Look at this, man, though. Friends, we knew this. I mean, like, we had... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven green monthly candles. Look, it's already going red. Look, friends, I want, I want us to go up. Give us left translated. Just do something on the upside. Please going up and up and up. But look, you and I both know, I don't want to say this, but you know it's healthier if we reset now. You know it and I know it. Because if we get a standard four-year cycle, it will perfectly line up. Maybe we can like sell all the altcoins in April 2025. We actually get a nicer, smoother run. We don't have to panic. We still have the menage a trois type of dancing between Bitcoin and altcoins, which would be, it would be, friends, Bitcoin slowing down now. Altcoins have 60 days of a mania to June. Then there is a reset for the whole market. And then the thing to do is to buy Bitcoin and play for it to break the all-time high by the end of the year. So what I'm doing then, I'm actually describing to you the, the four-year cycle, okay? So that's pretty much it. That would be it if it happens, friends. But we've already covered. We know what to do if there's a left-translated cycle, okay? But if there's a four-year cycle playing out, it would be... So the if we're going to end, friends, left-translated, we end here, okay, in this period of time. And if we're going to end normally, we end like up here. Okay, that's pretty much it. Somewhere up. See that difference here? That's the difference. So if we get left translated, it's that. Whereas if we do normal four-year cycle, it's that higher. So if we do a normal four-year cycle, we just go sideways for all of 2024. And then 2025, we continue up. That's what it would pretty much be. But we don't know, man. We don't know. So we're just on this eighth candle. Now it's obviously red. But I want to remind you as well, like, this is the type of stuff that you're just going to have to get used to where it is. It's not so predictable anymore, friends. There's no more blow-offs. You see that these blow-offs aren't happening in Bitcoin because it's getting more mature. People are learning the game. We know what retraces are. And look, you're not going to get spooked, right? If Bitcoin goes back down to $44,000, you're not going to get spooked here because look, the monthly super trend is still green. If that happens, the monthly super trend would be around here. So if we went back down here, I mean, nah, it's going to be very shaky. Of course, it's going to be fine. By the way, we close under this line. It's pretty much game over because that that's pretty much, hey, bear market, another year's time. So I don't think that's going to happen. And now, because you are my friend, I want to show you more bleeding, friends. This is ETH BTC is still low. It's ticked down to 0.049. It is literally like under 0.05. This is very, very weak. I want to show you like, but look at that. Look at Here's the thing there. If you go back to the other Bitcoin halvening year, it started just going up. Okay. It started going up and it moved. So, so what actually has happened? Well, truthfully, Money did enter crypto, but it went to Soilana. It went to Soilana. Soilana hit 100 billion market cap. So clearly, the money, the billions of dollars went into Soilana land. Soilana did the 12x. So, you know, if that money went into, if that went into Ethereum, you got to think, all right, 80 billion valuation. If that money, think about it, think, think if this, if Soilana was still like 30 billion and you added 50 billion into Ethereum, Okay, it would just be higher and then probably more momentum flow going on here and then. ETH BTC would be higher. It's actually more net money that came into Soilana to do that. So it'd be flushing up. So the money did appear. That's why, friends, I'm telling you now, man, there's nothing's guaranteed, man. Oh, you got these theories and, you know, oh, how are things going to play out? They're probabilities, man. That's why still people, look, I know a lot of people don't get it. I'll play some angel music for them. But look, when you have a cycle two coin, it doesn't mean your cycle two coin never pumps. It just means if you took all the cycle two coins, because remember, everybody thinks they're right. If you took all the cycle two coins, most of them, if they do get a move, it's at the end of the cycle. All right. If you're lucky, some of them, like did it was Soilana. That's only Soilana, man. Soilana did that. Everything else is still wrecked. You go, and also cycle one narratives. It doesn't mean if you have a cycle one narrative for sure that you pump. You have to have good tokenomics because they could time it wrong. Or if you have a cycle one coin, it doesn't mean you necessarily always outperform everything. It just means if you took all of them as a basket, on average, if you know what to look for, you do much better than everyone else. Now, I'm going to come back here and show you the weekly super trend, which is what we need for Bitcoin, friends. This is pretty much it here. What I've drawn here, this is like a left translated cycle type of pop. 
This is what it would look like. I oh, know it doesn't look like much. Bang. So it'd have to have some sort of fee pump at the end of the year. But we don't know. We don't know. Like at the end of the day, you could still always come back down here. Why can't it? Why can't it do that? Um, if we are to repeat this green weekly super trend from 2016, 17, this thing never gets flipped. And that's right at $51,000. I also want to share with you plan B has a model where it's basically short-term holders, long-term holders, and, and there's a floor price that gets made. And his price is 60K in terms of we will, that's the new floor, the strong floor. We will not go below 60K, which is really aggressive when you think about it. If you go, if you do the top friends, where our top was like 74K, if you go down to 60K, it is 18%. Wow. So I, I think it might be a month close. We will not close under 60K, maybe for a month. So that's just something to think about. A lot of people are like, man, that type of thinking got me wrecked before. But yes, okay, just don't do any leverage and stuff. I guess we'll just play it as it, as it comes. Don't forget some macro stuff as well, friends. This is the inverted yield curve, okay? It's still down here. Friendly reminder, the doom comes when they uninvert the yield curve. So we don't know, man. This could be the longest inverted yield curve from forever, and then it finally goes up. We don't know. Or it could just go up from here. Look, it's just when these things happen, it means like start the clock. Something bad is happening. One of the, you know, is all the market has now do, done lower odds for a rate cut in June. It's down 58%, but 58% still like, it's still likely this will happen. It just depends on the data and stuff coming out now. We have a nice look at the slingshot, friends. The slingshot shows obviously Bitcoin down here, and then you have the others index up here. So this is wonderful to see because they're following each other in line. That's, that's exactly what you want. Literally exactly what you want to tell you that things can come because we're kind of hoping that there's some sort of triangle forming here for Bitcoin and then eventually pops up, does the mega moon, the 90K, and then it comes back to 70. Everyone thinks it's over and then we, we go hot. That's pretty much it. That's actually everyone's expecting, fence. I just drew the exact cycle. So everyone expects this. We pop up to 90K. Everyone front runs 100, come back to 70, and then we do this. Something like move back down to 60, 70, you know, and then everyone is then ready. And this pretty much left translated cycle says this next move is a giant moonshot, a fee panic buy up to like 180K up here. That's left translated. And then basically it is over for the next two years. Okay, literally the next two years. You come back down, lower high, maybe that's old seasons peaking, come back down. Everyone thinks that's all right. Everyone thinks this is the bottom. No, then the bottom's down here a year later. So that's pretty much what left translated would be, okay? But the most important part is altcoins and Bitcoin are doing the exact same path. Like I said, the last thing you want to see is Bitcoin doing a lower high here, but altcoins doing this higher high like that. That means pretty much game over. Towards game over, it's like, uh-oh. Like, like, if we go back in history, this is actually really, really important. Whenever you had that big divergence, you it's literally game over time seriously because like if you go back this was the dogecoin mania friends remember dogecoin is still not up to here it's been like three years right more than three uh almost three years since this point look what started happening here you had bitcoin doing this higher high lower high here but the orange line keeps going up bitcoin's final one crashes here lower high this is dogecoin mania right here you see that snap it's literally all over so if you want to do that again i'm just going to show it to you slowly this is literally the end, the end, friends. The actual end is, and it's crazy, right? It's crazy because, trust me, I'm in your position as well, and I get scared. I'm like, what if there's a big crash and it's actually over? It's actually over. There's always a jitter. The jitter crash is the is the one where there's the last jitter, and then altcoins do the final big thrust, okay? And it's, it's very scary because the jitter is so strong but it gets recovered, everybody gets co competent. It's the complacency rally, all right? So I'm gonna show you what that final jitter was back here. So the final jitter was Bitcoin going back down to low. It touched down here 47K, remember we're at 64. This is back in 2021, and then with this lower high here. With this lower high, look what altcoins are doing, friends. They did up here, and they went bang, 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 bang. Look at this, bang, bang, bang. By the way, this is from 24th of April to the 14th of April. So three weeks of bang, 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 bang. That's three weeks. That's the ultimate Dogecoin mania. SHIB gets listed, Coinbase app, right? bang, 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 all that. 21 days, okay? So 21 days is a long time, right? We think about, it, oh, wow, like there's, you know, there's three, three eight-hour time zones in the day and you're seeing it. So that, that's pretty much what it comes down to, okay? At the very, very end. There are some fake outs though. So I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna be honest with, I'm gonna be like truthful with you. Look at these friends, look at this. There's a part here where you just think, 
it's like over. You see this? But then look, Bitcoin goes up again, which is what you want. Okay, there's another part here. This is the scary part. Look at this. Bitcoin is doing a lower high. You see that part? That's a lower high. And look what it's doing up here. It goes up and up and up and up. That's April, March and April. You see that? And then Bitcoin breaks a tie. This was your saving grace. Bitcoin goes up and touches that 64K. You see that? So you now we now get to see if Bitcoin can go and just poke a tie and touch a tie, it resets everything again. It gives you more time. You know and that? That's basically friends. This is like super, super deep competitive edge friendship here. You see that again? So Bitcoin right here. Okay, you see right there? It broke its high and it gave it more time. So if we actually look what this time period was, this was the 18th of April, the 10th of April. And then it said, so here's the thing, friends. By the way, if you were selling around that time anyway and you don't watch it that closely, you win anyway. Because, you know, you win. It's just that the extreme stuff happened in May. Like Come Rocket did a 400x in like 17 days because Elon Musk talked about it and all these other stuff. So that's the final, final round of junk that comes out there. So that's the actual real news you need to learn from all that. Okay, we also saw recently, so why is there actually any jitters right now? It's because the US government transferred 30,000 Bitcoin from Silk Road to Coinbase. I saw a community notes on Twitter Rooney's. They said basically that it's not actually confirmed Silk Road. And a lot of other people, like shout out to Mr. Carrot Licker, CL, our favorite cat, yellow cat, with a rain jacket on, rain coat on, um, basically said that uh, this type of stuff, the government sells it first. They do the deal first, then they send it. Okay, so they do the deal, someone ends up buying it, and then they start sending it through. So that's pretty much how it works. It would make sense for them to do that rather than broadcast to the wider market. Also, I got a big warning for you guys. Man. This is true. Many mainstream influencer channels have made top 10 coins to get rich on Coinbase tutorials. I saw lovely friends at Crypto Banter Show. I saw Miles. I've just seen so many fans, bang, 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 all over YouTube. You've probably seen them too. I'm like, oh, no. First, but here's the thing, let's be honest. We saw the same thing with Soilana a month and a half ago. It kept going. You see? That's why, friends, like, that was top signal stuff in 2021 and 2017. That was top signal stuff, all right? Now it's normal because it's kind of like a representative of the market cap. But when we reach new market caps, there are new top signals, more extreme. You see that? We are now revisiting the... It's, it's fascinating, right, that we're able to go through this. I can actually show it to you. We can go to the total crypto market cap, right? So see this, see this, friends? Here? The top signals of the top 10 stuff, right, they started here. But guess what? They also started back there in April. Isn't that wild? <clears throat> and they were also like around here. So it's kind of like in the universe when the total crypto market cap is 2.2 trillion, you're seeing those types of videos out. So I guess our goal is, friends, when we enter new territory here, there's going to be new top signals, new top signals, but we're going to have to look for something that's maybe extreme. We're hoping something like up up here. That, that's why, what's an extreme one? That's why I'm starting to say, okay, we've got and Andrew Tate coin or Jim Cramer. Like imagine he makes like a full on crypto episode. Imagine Jim Cramer makes an episode. You know what I mean? Like you just that type of stuff. Maybe U.S. Congress now ban themselves from stocks. So these types of things, that's what we're just going to be looking out for. We're nowhere near that. Nowhere near that. Right now, think about it. You look yourself in the mirror, you're like, man, this thing could crash down to zero any day now. If you're thinking like that, that means there's bull market fuel left. Also got to remind you too, you know, Jimmy Cramer, friends, Jim Cramer, we saw bearish Jim Cramer posts about the stock market. He actually said this is the most overbought I've seen in a long time. Yes, Jim Cramer. Actually, he's official Twitter. You always got to make sure you check the Twitter username to make sure you're not getting trolled. There, yeah, he's actually bearish on the stock market. But I want to show you the stock market. Look what he's talking about right up here. By the way, friends, just let you know, man. Look what the stock market does when it's like too high. It drops 10%. And then it just starts going up again. You see that? So what would like a 10% drop here look like? It would be bank 10% if that happens and then come back up. That, that's, that's oh, we're really, really high in stocks. But you know, in crypto, crypto is like, okay, you are go down 90%, drop up. Nah, you're a scam. We're going to ban you all. And then we go, <laughs> you know, that's basically crypto. I've also shown you here, right? The US Fed's about a 58% chance to cut rates. June 14th, still waiting. Every day we track it. 
Is that going to coincide with something at the very, very end? I like offense. So it's crazy, right? Because, you know, in the in 2022 and 2023, when the hope is relinquished from your hands and the market keeps bleeding and bleeding and bleeding, you feel really bad. But now in a bull market, when hope is relinquished, it's because the market stops giving you green candles and then it comes back down. But this this type of action, it never fully hits you back into the super deep dark times again. It doesn't. That's early bull market. Okay, but you think it will because you're trained from the bear market mentally, right? But then as you go up and up and up, you feel so confident. Oh my gosh! Like for example, some of you, some of you sitting on there's people out there sitting on like thirty grand portfolio, and they're happy to make two hundred fifty thousand by the end of this cycle. What if they end up at one point one million? And then they don't want to get out. That's what happens. Greed, right? Greed, of course. They don't want to get out 1.1 million. And then it comes back down to 500K. And now it's back up to 680K. All right. Now, in their mind, they're like, you know what? I was happy with $250,000. I've got now like 650. So I'm cool. That's complacency fence because you think you really, really, really made it. That's why these people think, oh, AI and all these other things are definitely going to change the world. Yeah, they're going to change the world. But they're going to change your portfolio forever, though. They're not going to change the market participants' reaction to Bitcoin pooping the bed in a bear market when the bids finally run out. You see what I mean? So that's the type of stuff you got to be thinking about. <clears throat> as that, that's going to appear. Right? That's why the only way actually to save yourself from that is to be peeling 1%, 1%, 1%. 1%. You, don't, you never want to see your portfolio price quote if you just held all your coins because you'll never get rid of it because you'll always see a number higher, higher, higher. Because think about it. You don't know how, like every eight hours, it's going to keep going up and up and up and up until that one point, that's the last one. But you don't know that's the last one. So you never, be, because here's the thing, someone here, so let's say, that, oh, this is what happens, friend. someone who's happy with 300,000 in their portfolio, they end up with 1.1 million. But if it goes down to 500K, they're not going to get out because they're like, wait a minute, I just lost 600K. You know what I mean? That's how they feel, their price quote loss. But they're not thinking about, hey, you're still up from the four. See, that's why it's very, very hard. But if you're peeling off along the way, you never have to deal with that torment and you actually make the right decision on average. Also, your friend saw me, he has burned a token supply bribe. I've just made a video about it. I sent this to Richard Hart's Pulse Chain Sacrifice linked wallet. Edge. Of course, friend, a lot of people are trying to bribe me. They're trying to send, oh, here's a token gift donation. No, 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 no. We know what exactly what it is. The, the game is take these coins, make everyone think that you own a lot so you're benevolent so people can keep buying it up and people end up benefiting from that. So I end up sending the coins out. They're out. And yes, I've got, you can watch that video, friends, about if, if you're going to make a coin, people are going to keep damn gambling and DJ. I know you are. I know you want exposure on me, friends. You could just buy the coins that I buy as well. You could do that, but I know what you're going to do. I know it's, at the end, it's easy. If it's like, oh, let's make a coin of this guy. So pretty much it is what it is. Also, PulseX hit 3.83% total supply bought and burnt, which is actually really cool, 3.83%. Remember, the other day, it was just 3.80%. So it's actually going up. That's actually nice. There's also more of a burnt because the PulseX, Pulse Chain Sacrifice Wallet is also buying that as well. So remember, I made a video just showing you. We have, look, there. there's a retrace that's happened, which is kind of poopy. But firstly, friends, I don't want to scare you. I'll just show you the weekly chart. The weekly chart, look at this. We're in the 21 EMA. We've pulled down. Yeah, it's a bit heavy. You'd want a bit higher, but it is what it is, okay? So, but you can't, you can't take this, man. You can't You can't just look at these and go, well, I'm going to time it perfectly. You, you have to take out a multiple weeks type of time frame here. But if you go down on the 15 minute, yeah, it does look poopy because look what ends up happening. You end up seeing this is Richard Hart's pulse saying sacrifice wallet, inserting money, and then market rejects, bang. But also, that's us selling because why? Bitcoin has sent down, but it does kind of suck that you insert money, people front run. So this is it, the inserting money part, and then people front run, and then it all comes back down. Actually, it's retraced basically his whole move of buying. As you can see, friends, like you can't fight the market, sadly. Sadly, so look, if, um, if, if you were to speak to Richard, he would say, you, the market, are selling, not me. You are selling. So he'd basically, it's true though. It's true. Like you are selling, but not you, man. We're here. You know how thin the liquidity is, friends. Okay. Best, best example. All right. There's a house. You light a fire inside. There's a hundred people inside. All right. Two fat people try to leave and they clog up the door. Two, just two fat people. There's 98 people in there. All right. And then everybody dies. 
Okay? A sad death. And then, you know, the, the priest at the end saying, well, everyone could have survived, but just, you know what I mean? The door, the door, there was just two fat people. You know what I mean? Like, you know, two fat people. You guys tried to exit. Like, no, the door could only fit two people going out. You know what I mean? You can't blame everybody in there. He's like, oh, well, you know, it shouldn't have been in that house. You can't. So, but that's pretty much what it comes down to markets, friends. It's it. It's not about like what side do I take? It just, it is, you have to accept it for what it is. Also, I don't know if you made the connection. I've got to make it for you now. You see how Ethereum's bleeding? Pulse chain's bleeding. We are leverage on Pulse chain. You seeing it now? Ethereum keeps bleeding and bleeding and bleeding to Solana. Pulse chain is bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. Now, who's going to win? We don't know. But you just kind of think eventually the chickens come home to roost and have their orange juice fountain drinks in Ethereum. You think, but we don't know, man. We don't know, friends. What if Coinbase, what if these other changes come and take you? Yeah, we have no idea. You're just trying to see what works. But look, at the end of the day, man, friends, I just, you you were here. How many videos did I make about Ethereum's third cycle curse? How many videos, friends? I made over eight and I mentioned it like 50 times. You know, Ethereum is in a third cycle and you know, the third cycle is a curse. There's a letdown somewhere. Because remember, I said to you, it's either going to let us down with the price target somewhere. It's going to let us down somewhere. It's going to let us down. I hope it doesn't let us down with the all the things leverage on Ethereum part. I hope it's not that. Okay. I hope it's more like we're at 8,000. Everybody thinks we're going to 15 to 20, but then like 8,900 is the top. And then that's that's basically the top next stop four to three in the next bear mark. I hope obviously that's a disastrous scenario, but I'm just hoping if it's gonna punish us, it does that. Because all the other things go wild and us. I I I hope it's that rather than the scenario of like just ultra doom. <clears throat> so of course I'm still very, very bullish on all ecosystems. I might make a video, friends. I've been saying this for a while. Well, I'll just go through heaps of altcoins, but I'm just waiting to see everything to just capitulate more. Um, BankX as well made a video on this. BankX have a new wall, all right? They've set a new wall, friends. The wall is now set lower. It doesn't cost 13 or 14 million to buy them out anymore. It's only 8 million and it's down here. People are seeing it. If you want to see the, obviously, the real ratio price, what's happening, you have EHEX versus Pulse. It's just seen out here. This could take quite some time, man. Three, six, nine months, pretty much here. Don't forget, friends, you know who you are in the comment section. I know, I see you there. I see you there. You guys were saying all the nasty things right at these candles, okay? I just, I wonder, the first thing that's going to happen, friends, is it might even go up here. It might. Then they shut up. I'm not going to make any victory videos because I'm going to know, you know what, you could just come back down here. Then you're like, aha, I told you. He can't get over it. He can't, he can't. And then somewhere down the line, whoop. And then you, that's nice. That's a nice return on your pulse. It is what it is. Also, nice friendship. Like, subscribe, belly button, all. Catch you soon.